Welcome back to Youth Jam right here on Youth Talk. Isaac here, right through until nine o'clock. I've got a guest on the phone this morning. Well, not really phone, it's more Zoom. Her name is Lucy Holmes. She's a radio presenter, performer and TV presenter. She's worked in Melbourne for years on The Light, as well as appearing on TV shows like All Together Now. Welcome to the show, Lucy. How are you? It's so lovely to finally chat to you after knowing you for many years. It's lovely we're finally doing this. And I've seen all your work in Melbourne. Absolutely amazing. I want to start off, though, where you actually began in radio. Where, where did you start and how did you get involved? You know, I um, actually started back, back many, 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 many years ago. I studied music theatre at university. So I did singing and dancing and acting. And I thought I'd end up in musicals. And I ended up on stage doing different sorts of performing. And I kind of fell into hosting a TV show on Channel 9 in my gosh in my mid mid 20s mid to late 20s i started hosting a tv show a late night game show around australia and when that finished up um there was a job going at light fm in melbourne which is a radio Mm. station and someone put my name forward for it they said listen she can talk underwater on tv for four (laughs) hours a night so she probably can talk non-stop on radio yeah so i went along i did some fill-in shifts they gave me the job on the brekkie show and i thought I'll do six months of radio and then I'll get back into TV. And then after six months of radio, I had just fallen in love with Mm. radio much more than TV. And 12 years later, I'm still in the same role, in the same show, at the same station. Um, And that's been my training ground and my absolute passion for the last 12 years. Well, what's it been like working at The Life for 12 years? I know that you've seen many folks come through. What's it been like being part of the furniture, I guess? Yeah, it's weird. It's so weird because when I started, I felt like the new girl who didn't know anything and everybody Mm. I worked with had worked in commercial radio and I felt out of my depth and I I was young and I was inexperienced. And now, you know, I'm one of the longest serving staff members out of like out of the 40 staff. There's two Mm. or three of us that have been there 12 years. And I do, I feel like a bit of a part of the furniture and a part of the legacy, but I love it because I've seen it grow from a tiny, a really, not a tiny station, but a smaller station of about 300,000 listeners to yep. now we have 1.2 million listeners. Yeah, wow. So to see it grow from this tiny station and this small premises to now these huge premises with such a large audience, I've loved being part of the growth and seeing that grow over, over the 12 years. It's amazing. What draws you to radio then? So is it the listener connection or is it being in a studio of someone creative? What draws you to the light and radio as on a whole? Um, I think I love the, my favourite thing is the immediate connection with listeners. Mm. Um, when you're on TV, you're often, more often than not, you're re- recording something that goes in the can and may not be seen mm. for yeah. a month, months, you never know. But with radio, it is, it is moment to moment. The listeners mm. call in no matter what you say. They text in, they're a part of the show. And I think the most wonderful thing about radio is you become so close to your listeners. They think of you like a best mate. Yeah. They have their routine. They let you into their cars. They end up loving you like a family member, which I don't think mm. you get that in TV or even no. it, as a performer or a, like, a, you know, an actor. But as a radio host, people just connect to you as a person. And I think that's the most amazing thing. That's what I love mm. about radio. You get to be really real. And people really respond to that. And I feel, because I went to 98.5 when I was 13 years old, and I feel when you were at those kind of stations, the light, 98.5, hope, all them, I feel that you never know who's listening and you never know who you're impacting with what you're doing. Do you feel that? Yeah, totally. I mean, the amount of stories over the 12 years that I have heard of listeners ringing in, going through horrific things, and they turn on the station and they hear something that literally not only changes their life, but in so mm. many situations has saved their life. You know, I had a woman one day say to me um, in passing, she goes, thank you so much. She said something on there that saved my marriage. And then she walked away. Wow. I remember thinking, wait, what did I say? Wow. What did I, say? <laughs> wow. I think that's incredible is you don't know the impact and you've got to mm. be okay with that. If you're looking for like that instant kind of, you know, um gratification that you mm. are changing lives you won't get it it's so very no. subtle and beautiful and you only yeah. ever hear about it mm. if someone chooses to tell you so I, that's what i love about it that it can be so impacting and it can change lives like every minute of the day 
Yeah, it could be a song, it could be what you say, it could be anything. It's, and that's 100%. And I suppose in Christian media, we are continuously working and working and working to bring God's word. I'm just interested to know for you, has your relationship with God changed at all or has it gotten stronger and stronger and stronger? Oh my gosh, my relationship got, with God changes. I would hope it changes weekly sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> but I look back at when I started in radio and I was in my 20s. And I was a lot younger and mm. I was probably a little bit more, not too, probably a, bit, a little bit too scared to question parts of my faith. And, mm. and I think I had a more simple faith, which was beautiful and it was appropriate for my age. And I just, yeah. you know, believed what I believed and I didn't rock the boat and I didn't ask any questions. And I kind of just listened to exactly what, you know, the people on the pulpit would tell me, I wouldn't think for myself, is that right? Is that true? Does that mm. resonate with me? Is that how I want my faith to be? I just kind of, you know, did whatever people told me. And I tried to play mm. it very safe on air. I didn't want to rock the boat. I didn't want to upset anybody. I wanted to be really like just nice. And I think yeah. the older I've got on radio, I don't, I don't ascribe to that anymore, but that can only come with age. But now I, I have a very evolving faith that I love. I love that I can question things. I love yeah. that I can question pastors. I love that there are parts of our faith that have no answers. And, the, and now as a 40-year-old, I go, that is okay. It's fine yeah. mm. to have these massive gray areas and go, it's okay. It, I'm never going to have all the answers. I, I, I can't. So, and I, don't, and I don't mind now being more brave on air, discussing my faith and the things I believe. And whilst, you know, not everyone has the same theology, that's a, 20 Christians in a room. Every single one is going to have different theology on something. Yeah. And you put yeah. 1.2 million listeners in a room. <laughs> yeah. Whoa. Belief. Yeah, yeah. But there are some people that will think, well, she's a female. She shouldn't even be on radio, you know, well, from yeah. that level. So I yeah. like where I am in my faith now. I love that it is evolving and I'm, I'm, I'm okay with it evolving now. I think that's a healthy thing. Hmm. And I've got a friend at 6PR in Perth who's, all, who's always said to me, when you're on air, you can learn from the listeners. And do you think that that's the case? Do you think you can learn from those who are calling in? And I feel you can. I feel when they, you know, they call and they go and they give you a perspective that you've never thought of before. Do you see that? Yeah, totally. I mean, I think if you get on air and you think you know it all and you have all the answers, then you're going to have a really short radio yeah. career because no one wants that. No. Or you'll probably be on talk back on one of the big stations. Oh, and yeah. you're like a, a nice seven-year-old white middle-class man. A shock jock, yeah. And you know it all. But yeah. I think the most beautiful thing about radio, it has to be a conversation and you mm. have to be willing to ask questions to learn. Um, yeah. You can't just spew your beliefs at people and ask them to suck it up. It's got to be a two-way thing. So yeah. I think I have learned a lot over the years. I mean, from the big things to the little things. I mean, I love it when people, you know, try and educate me on different stuff. I love it because yeah. I want to be the best person I can be. So I'm willing to take advice from wherever I can get it from. Mm. And then moving on a little bit now to, you know, you and I and many different people in radio and TV get a little bit of criticism on the side of all the lovely comments we get. I suppose I want to yeah. know, because for, for me especially, how do you deal with that kind of criticism? Because for me, I don't really know myself. So I'd love to know yeah. for our listeners and for me, how would you deal with that kind of criticism there? You know, working in Christian radio is an extraordinary privilege but with that comes a group of people who feel like they can sometimes abuse you and because mm. they're christians it's okay mm. and i faced that for 12 years i have had uh, my fair share of hate mail and i mean it's funny like i can get like you know a hundred text messages from listeners going i love you you're great <laughs> you've changed my life and you yeah. get one from someone which just goes oh you and you know, they might say something stupid like oh i can't stand you or and, and instantly that's what guts you there's one mm. bit of bad feedback and you could have a thousand people yelling that they love you and you, you always listen to the one which is awful yeah. but in the early days when i was in my 20s and i got like angry sms's or calls I would be gutted. Like I would, yeah. I'm such a people pleaser. Like I'm a people pleaser through and through. So the fact that a stranger didn't like me would gut me. Like I yeah. would cry my eyes out oh. after a show mm. just from one nasty person. And then I think over the years I realized, hang on, this isn't about me. Mm. It's about them. And they've got stuff going on. And then the older I got, the more I could have empathy going, what kind of person is so angry and has such an unhappy life that they take joy 
in tracking me down to bring me down. And then I yeah. realized that it only need, all I needed to do was have empathy for those people and go, oh, that's really sad. I'm sad that that's who they are, that they're not living in a place of freedom and joy. And so now when I pop hate mail, I'm like, I just feel sad for them and I don't let it affect me because I've realized life's too short to let other people dictate who I am. Like yeah. God tells me who I am. I decide who I am, not some faceless keyboard warrior, you know, on the other side of the city. I'm not going to let them take up, you know, wrench in my head. So you get, the longer you do it, the better you get at it. Unfortunately, it's kind of a, a thing that comes with age. Yep. And I'm not, I'm not there yet. I'm still very young. So I'm still, for me, I'm still mm. learning and, you know, a lot comes in and, you know, I'm still at a stage where I'm kind of reading it going, oh, is that how they feel? Really? Oh, and then, you know, you get a bit emotional, but, you know, since I've been yeah. 13, just learning and learning and learning and how to, to combat that. And just, you know, now I ignore, block, delete. That's my process. Exactly. Ignore, block, delete, say a prayer for them and let it go and realize a lot of people's comments, especially probably at your age, I would, I would say like nearly 99% of things that you would probably deal with is purely jealousy. It's yeah. just pure jealousy at your age. It's, it's people going, well, I wish I was on radio. Why does he get to say this? And, and people react to that. And then that, that's when they attack you. When you get older, it's not so much jealousy. It's just everyone has got an opinion on everything, you know, when yeah. they hit middle age. And, but I think for younger people, it, it's more just a tall poppy thing. So mm. you really just have to know who you are and go back to places of, of you know, where you know you're going to get good advice, friends, mentors, family members and you've got to go this isn't who I am and and not give them the benefit of ruining you know a great day for you yeah moving on now to CVM now you guys you've been involved with them for quite some time now um what I just want to know straight up what's it like going overseas and seeing those life-changing surgeries what is it like it is it is you know it's the best thing I've done in my life hands down apart from having my daughter that's the yeah. best thing <laughs> but after <laughs> having my daughter Every year I get to go over, and we don't get to go this year, it's cancelled because of COVID, mm. understandably, but yeah. every year I've gone over with CBM, it is a life-changing moment every year without fail. It never gets any easier. It doesn't become any less impactful. When I get to meet people in the developing world who have nothing, like they live mm. under a piece of tin in a slum, wow. and you see their lives, and that is heartbreaking enough, when you hear how being blind has affected them, and if you're blind in a third world country, that's it. You are the forgotten. You're the ones yeah. that are just left at home because there's, there's nothing you can do. You're a burden on your family often. If you're a woman, you won't be married off. If you're a man, you can't provide for your family. And then to watch them have the operation and it takes a couple of minutes, like that's amazing. And then when you see the patches taken off the next day and they can see and they can see their children for the first time, like every single year, I, I am hysterical. I sob because it's criminal how cheap it is. It's like 32 bucks to yeah. give someone their life back. And last year, I, there was this one lady who had been blind. She'd not seen her two-year-old daughter. And I got wow. to witness the moment she saw her two-year-old daughter for the first time. Wow. And she just, she was specious and she couldn't stop grinning. And, and I just kept thinking about my daughter and I just started sobbing and I actually lost the plot. I was hysterical. And this lady was so, this Nepalese lady, cause she was young as well. She was like 21 or wow. 20, something yeah. crazy. Even yeah. younger, I think. I think, yeah, I think she's actually younger. We couldn't really ascertain her age, but I remember she just enveloped me in a hug and actually not a particularly touchy nation, especially not with Westerners, but she just grabbed me and she kissed my face and we just hugged and I sobbed. And it was probably one of the most powerful moments in my entire life. And I kept thinking, if this is all I've done on this planet is raise money for these people so they can see again, then I'm happy with that. Like I, yeah. I can die happy because I feel like I've made a bit of a difference in the world. It is such good work. And when we're over here, we see all the photos coming in and we're just so happy that, you know, in Australia, photo box is nothing. It really is nothing. And it's so good to see what that goes, goes towards. And it's just brilliant. Lucy, that's all I've got time for today. But thank you for your chat this, this evening. It's been really fun. And uh, we're going to get her back, folks. We're going to have to get her back at one point. Thank you, Lucy Holmes, so much. Um, well done to you. Keep doing what you're doing. You're awesome. You're going to have a massive career ahead of you. And I can't wait to say, I knew him when he started. <laughs> thank you very much. I'll try. I'll try.